Hello, good morning everyone. Thank you for coming. So um, we will now start uh, our lecture. We will start it with a prayer. So I have here with me I have here with me Ma Mabel, the instructor in Computer 1, Section A, to lead us in prayer. Let us put ourselves in holy presence of God, and the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this hour asking for your blessing and help us as we gather together. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. Give us a desire to find ways to excel in our work. Help us to work together and encourage each other to excellence. We ask that you would challenge each other to reach higher and farther to be the best we can be. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So again, good morning, everyone. So this is our first time. So I hope you will bear with me since um, this is also my first time using this kind of um, method in giving my discussion Okay, um, I'd like to know if. Okay, Rabang, ano ba? Mambe? So, what you're picking up? Okay, I'd like to know. Okay. 
So we ha are having technical problem with our golden microphone. <laughs> so, okay. So again, before we begin our lesson this morning, I would like to uh, introduce Ma Mabel, uh, Mabel Olager, the um, one of the new faculty of the College of Criminal Justice Education, handling Computer One Section A. So let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> okay. Hello, good. Ay, sorry. Hello, good morning, everyone. My Buntag. Okay, so um, once again, with a pleasant morning, I am Maria Bella Olagir from Balilihan. Uh, I am an instructor for Computer Two, Section A. So most of the students here are online. Most of my students here are online. No? Tanan mo siguro. So, okay, enjoy the rest of the day and have a pleasant day. Marta? <laughs> Okay, so thank you, Mama Bell. Um, we are really having technical problem, but we wanted to have this activity successful despite of the challenges that we encountered at the moment. So, um, anyways, uh, okay, so there are a lot of people who are already here sa ato ang um, live and right after this um right after this uh, lecture we will have a short uh, a short quiz and also uh, we will have um a game no na you will also uh, be able to get uh uh big prices char so natay mga free um free nga ihatag nako ihatag nga mga free free load and baby item i do not know mga yung sponsor so maybe in the next uh, lecture to come we will have um sponsors nga muhatag og load char okay so without further ado let us now i will now be sharing my screen for our lecture introduction to Philippine criminal justice education. So uh, I would like to uh, inform everyone that um, again, right after this lecture, you I will be getting your attendance as part of uh, this activity. You will be giving points. And if you miss some of the, um, some of the lectures or some of the, the topics, that I will be presenting, you can replay this one in the platform that I am uh, using. Okay, so thank you very much again for for coming, and let us not let us now start the uh, presentation.
one moment lang guys ha i will um share my screen now medyo nagka-loading lang gamay pero carrier ah All right, so I hope um, my screen is now available. My PowerPoint presentation is now available. Okay, so let us now start. Um, our topic this morning is the introduction to Philippine criminal justice uh, system. 
in which um of course uh before uh i before um before anything else i would like to know that uh i would like you to 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 inform everyone that this is um since this is our first uh, meeting first uh, virtual meet um this will we subject will be we will be discussing the introduction to the philippine criminal justice system so considering that most if not all criminology students want to enter law enforcement services hence um this must uh, must be well knowledgeable about all of the all of them should be uh, if not all uh, should be knowledgeable about the system so what are we waiting for let us now begin our module one with topic introduction to the criminal justice system so the course description of our subject is um this course deals with the study of the composition of the five pillars of the criminal justice system in the Philippines. One of the pillars is the law enforcement pillar for prosecution, court, corrections, and community. So it, all, it also covers their respective functional relationship as well as the individual rules in the administration of justice and solution of crimes. So this course will also um, incorporate the specific or the scientific study of uh, crimes, criminals, societal responses to their behavior in panel and non-panel setting, and the administration of this criminal justice um, correction, including parole, through the procedures and the practices of the Philippine uh, of the Philippine criminal justice system with its linkages. So considering that most, if again, not all criminology students wants to enter the, the law enforcement services, then um, it must be well knowledge, they must be well knowledgeable of about the system. So I hope you are, uh, you have already read the um, entire course outline that I have sent in your Google Classroom. And if not, uh, please do so. So um, let us begin now the, the topic of um with a brief history so the brief history of the philippine crim criminal justice system was when the first settlers in the philippines were believed to have arrived here a thousand years before Christ. So the, these uh, settlers were uh, named nomads, and these nomads were uh, those who wandered from one place to another in search of food. So um, these nomads were somewhat same with chick boys. You know what is chick boys, right? Yes. So who were uh, these uh, chick boys who wandered from one place to another? Um, this is not actually um, with different purpose. Nomads uh, wanted to search for food while these uh, chick boy is searching for pleasure. So these nomads soon uh, realized that there was a need for them to group themselves and uh, settle in one place to, uh, for them to help one another in raising animals and planting vegetables. So when grouped together, uh, however, problems were encountered when members of the community committed some uh, infractions of, uh, against the others. So uh, they realized that there was a need for them to organize a body to arrest offenders and conduct trial. So the that was then the time that the trial by ordeal was uh, discovered. Uh, this trial by ordeal and the like were practiced 
to be determined whether a person was guilty. If, um, if you're not familiar with this trial by ordeal, this is um, one. Uh, this is uh, one of the punishment during the Anglo-Saxon period, in which um, um, this will going to determine a person who is who was guilty or not guilty of a charge or a certain crime so under this uh, trial by ordeal a person accused of a crime was uh, ordered to perform an act which may hurt him so in what form in the fo in the form of placing his hands over the boiling water so could you just imagine putting your hands in a boiling water kulo, kulo ang, ang tubig so um that was one of the, the the way to to know if the person is uh, guilty or not now uh, once you put your hands over the bowl, boiling water if you got hurt uh, that means to say or that would declare that you are guilty now otherwise if you uh if you're not hurt then um you will be considered innocent so that was the belief before uh, during the anglo-saxon period in which uh this is this was based on the belief that uh during the time god protected the innocent persons so right after that um period there was also there was also um, Magellan who came, um, who came in the Philippines, here in the Philippines on uh, March 16, 1521. And that was th that day that was considered to be the, a significant part of the history, not only in the Philippines, but as well as the international community. So after Magellan came here in the Philippines, it was found out that the world was round. And it was also found out that there were already organized settlers here in the Philippines being governed by local chieftains or um, what we call as sultans and rajas. So each of these sultans and rajas, uh, headed by a barangay, was the one who is charged of conducting trial and um, punishing those who found uh, guilt, who were found guilty. So as time passed by, there things and crimes became very complicated to deal with and so it was argued by Cesare Vicaria in his book entitled Essay on Crime and Punishment that government agencies should uh, swiftly detect, try, and punish um, offenders and must be and this must be created. So that is why this um, particular subject was being uh, discovered, the criminal justice uh, system. And at present, the Philippine government have been providing us a manner on how to deal with persons who are arrested for the commission of a crime. So it was also provided that um, how these um, arrest that persons undergo what be what we call as the preliminary investigation and inquest proceedings. And these, um, I know you are not uh, very familiar with the words, um, but um, this will be discussed in the next uh, part of the subject and the next sessions, uh, uh, next sessions or virtual discussions. So, um, there was also cases, um, it was also um, provided how their cases were being heard and even how they are being punished in a case of conviction. So this was also, however, um, uh, aside from after being conviction, they also provided the, the 
the in reintegr the reintegrated in the community after serving their penalty. So that was the brief history of um Philippine criminal justice system. Now the question part of this criminal justice system is what we call as um the criminals. So the Philippine criminal justice was being discovered because there there is such a word called criminals and who are these criminals criminals are person uh, these are persons um being convicted of a crime by a final judgment so these uh person um these um these criminals are considered to be as the main character or star of the criminal justice system so um, it is considered again as the main character or star of the criminal justice system and in every pillar of the criminal justice system a person who has been being arrested of the commission of crime in, for in for example uh, if in the law enforcement stage um, this person is what we call as suspect okay now in when he uh, he undergoes the prosecution stage he will now be called respondent and when he goes to the court he will be called accused and when he will be uh, in the correction stage he will then be called criminal or convict and when he comes back to the community he is called the ex-convict so um, those are the different uh, uh, different words uh, that would describe a criminal based on the different stages in the Philippine criminal justice system so criminals are are when can we say that um, judgment of conviction become final so judgment of conviction become final if for in the following instances so we have after the lapse of 15 days to appeal when the accused waives his right to appeal and when the accused applies for probation and when the case is decided with finality by the supreme court and the right to file a motion for reconsideration is closed so take note class that um these are just um an overview of on the next chapters or in the next um um next episodes that we will going to have so uh we will discuss everything uh, all of these um instances on um the court pillar and in the prosecution pillar okay so criminals are called criminals because they committed a crime right so if then if then what is a crime if i would um going to um, if you would remember um last semester when you had your introduction to um criminology these things are already been discussed but for the um sake of this subject we are going to have the um a sort of remembering of what is re what is a crime so i know you are very familiar of what is crime um for the definition it is a crime that is an act or omission punishable by law for provide uh, forbidding or commanding it now there are legal classifications of crime according to the, the different um, aspects according to the law punishing it it is called felony offense and uh, violation or obstruction or ordinance 
According to the presence and absence of intent, it is intentional crime. And the other one is culpable crime. According to the gravity, it is grave, uh, less grave, and light felonies. Now, if it is according to crime, according to the impact to society, um, these are uh, the following. Crimes mala in si and crimes mala prohibita. And according to the presence of the absence of attempted and frustrated stage, this is what we call formal crimes and material crimes. So, what is the definition of justice? I, um, these questions that I have been asking was already been uh, answered during your, um, during the learning, uh, during the polls questions that I have, uh, I have given in your Google Classroom. So uh, this is now the, the answers to the to those questions. So when we say justice. It is an act of rendering, uh, rendering what is due, or treating persons equally. And this person must, however, fall in uh, within the same classification. And what are these classification? This classification in the preceding slide was about the um, the basis. Oh, these are the basis or classifications means that the Congress may clarify a group or groups of person to whom a certain law is applicable. Basis are the following. Um, one is such classification rests upon substantial distinction and it is germane to the purpose of the law it is not confined to the existing condition only and it applies the equally uh, it applies equally to all the members of the same class so um, that is uh, the classification of and uh, that would fall or the justice that will fall within the same classification Now, what is the meaning of system and the criminal justice system? The meaning of the criminal justice, um, meaning of the, the uh, system in the criminal justice system is um, it is a combination of related elements organized into a group in organized into a complete whole and it may also be referred to the process to be followed now um giving a certain scenario um before we proceed with the with the next slide so, uh I'd, la I'd like to go back to the last slide the um justice now i'm going to give you a certain scenario well the the scenario goes like this um if um there are two persons who were uh let, let us say um, mr a and mr b were were convicted of a crime and they were thrown in prison to serve a maximum penalty of five years because they have committed a certain crime uh, both of them committed uh, committed um, crime, five years imprisonment. They question their imprisonment. So, um, despite that they know that they they were convicted because they done something wrong, they question their imprisonment because according to them, their um, imprisonment is um the, the, their impre according to them their imprisonment violated the equal protection clause of the constitution or they cannot eat uh mcdonald's or jollibee anymore like what uh other persons are doing 
So my question, kindly comment down below sa inyuhang koan. My question is, um, is the uh, is Mr. A and Mr. B correct of of questioning the um questioning the imprisonment even if they uh, they are uh, they know for the fact that they have committed such crime? I need comment. I I want I wanted to to know if you are still listening. Is it um is it correct or not? Yes or no. No, yes, Desiree, I read your no. Sarbento said no. How about the others? Lansang, no. No, ma'am. Jessa, maguyup. No. The asses, no. Libot, no. No. So, are they correct? Yes, the answer is no. <laughs> Yes, the answer is no. No, because they are not correct because, 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 because what? They are not correct because Conviction of a crime justifies imprisonment. When you committed a certain crime, it is automatic yun na, na you will be or you will be convicted of a certain crime that you have committed. So, meaning to say, if they question the um, they question the uh, the uh, can um. The imprisonment because they cannot eat McDonald's anymore. Then that is one of uh, the consequences when you commit that, when you commit a crime, right? So because the thing now is that um, they 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 are still human, but they have now different status, different status in the sense that, that this Mr. A and Mr. B is now called or in the class of convicts and um, th those who like to eat or what do whatever they want are are the class of free men or they can do whatever they want so there is now limitation so okay so there is no because again uh the answer is no the scenario uh, is, is is they is are they correct the answer is no because uh mr a and mr b are not um correct because um conviction of a crime justifies imprisonment and of course they belong already to class of convicts and that's different from those who did not commit a crime or free man. Okay? Now, in the preceding questions that I have said a while ago, um, is Mr. Uh, okay, I will not just be asking this question anymore uh, because this will be related to another pillar. Okay. So, okay, next slide. Okay. So what is now the Philippine criminal justice system? So the Philippine criminal justice system is the process of which the government follows when someone violates criminal law. And this is a procedure sanctioned by the law and the rules of court for those 
who those people suspected suspected for the commission of a crime so therefore the philippine criminal justice system is the process of the government which uh follows some uh someone that violates criminal law and um this is a procedure again that is sanctioned by the law and the rules of the court for those people suspected for the commission of crime so without the first violation of law, which is in the law enforcement pillar, then arrest by the police, the system is not and cannot be validly considered commenced, right? So um, it will not uh, undergo to the next stage. So it should be that the police or the law enforcers on top of the list will be the initiator or more accurately considered as the prime mover of the criminal justice system but however we cannot deny the fact that the community also occupies special place in the system so the absence of these pillar will paralyze the entire system okay now what is the concept of the philippine criminal justice system the concept of the philippine criminal justice system is in um one is the spanish and anglo american law um, the adaptation of the spanish anglo-american law the common law principle that is not adhered criminal law and in general territorial and prospective in application and legation is adversarial in nature so let's have the distinction between criminology and the criminal justice now criminology focuses only on the focuses on the de determination and develop development of um, principles or concept of theories of crime causation while the criminal justice system focuses on the legal process and how to deal with a criminal offender on the other hand criminology explains the etiology meaning the origin the extent and the nature of crime in society on the other hand the uh, criminal justice system studies the agency of social control that handles um, criminal offenders and then um, they focus on research and focus on the application public law public policy and uh, decision making and career development in the criminal justice system aside from that one of the distinction of criminal between criminology and criminal justice is that they concerned with identifying the nature the extent and the nature of crime while this criminal justice system engage in describing in analyzing and um, uh, explaining the operations of the agencies of justice which is the five components of the philippine criminal justice system and they see more effective methods of crime control and offender rehabilitation so one of the similarity of this criminology and uh, criminal justice is that both both of them the criminology and the criminal justice system is uh, or are electric uh, electric disciplines that borrow researches and theories from one another related disciplines so some of the earliest criminologists were medical doctors and psychiatrists while many influential criminologists of the 20th century were sociologists okay. so 
Another next slide is the distinction between the adult criminal justice and the juvenile justice. So what is the difference between the two of them? So like other countries, the Philippines has or the Philippines have this separate process for adults and juveniles. So a person that age of 18 who committed a crime is uh, who committed a crime is processed under the Republic Act number 9344 or the Juvenile Justice and Welfare Act of 2008. So the, on the other hand, person in the age of 18 and above must prosecute in accordance with the revised penal code. Or the re no the revised rules of court and um, and it will be promulgated or promulgated by the supreme court in the exercise of its rules making power under the constitution so the juvenile justice system or the juvenile justice gives more emphasis on the importance of rehabilitation and adherence to restorative justice rather than punishment and retribution. On the other hand, the juvenile justice system has what we call is a, is a specialized court and it is under the family court which is a regional trial court designated by the Supreme Court to handle family-related cases, including these juvenile cases. So there is no separate police for juveniles. But there are or there is a different approach towards them. So the juvenile will not be subjected to arrest, okay? That um, it will not be subjected to arrest, but a um, different approach in taking a child into uh, police custody, such as procedure for initial contact with the ch uh, uh, initial contact with the child. Um. The Women and Children Protection Desk or the WCPD in, uh, officer in, in your police station uh, will be uh, the one who will investigate the child in conflict with the law. Or, uh, this is uh, called CI, CICL cases for proper disposition under the, the laws and procedures. So that is the di distinction between um, adult criminal and justice and, of course, juvenile justice. Models in the administration of uh, justice. So there are two models in the administration of justice. And according to Packer 1993, there are two models in the administration of criminal justice which may differentiate as follows. So in crime control model, the administration of this criminal justice model is um, concentrated in efficiency through increased capacity to apprehend, to try, to convict, and giving emphasis on speed and finality of cases in dealing with those accused of crime. So the failure of the police and the other agencies of the justice system to bring the criminal under the control will conduct to the breakdown of the public order and disappearance of social order which is an important condition of human freedom justified this model. Another is the due, due process model. So the due process model is the primary consideration. Uh, the primary consideration of this model is to protect the rights of the accused. 
the individual freedoms and the general consideration of a uh, liberty and the basic right of an individual so however this may be resulted to delay in the administration of justice if i may um relate this one in a certain relationship for example a certain relation if it is uh, uh, if it is a, a kind of uh, um, a girl and boy relationship uh, courtship is what is one of the process or the due process okay so it may delay the uh, being into real relationship or into uh, into um boyfriend and girlfriend because uh, that is a uh, part of the due process the courtship so um let's just take it as an example of uh example of this due process so so uh i remember before my teacher would say to uh, would um give us advice to to um have um if you wanted to find the right man you have to to um, uh, practice the, the due process model, okay? So um, lang to siya, but um, that was that is also true. Huh? you have to say okay uh, before I say uh, I say my yes to you. You have to to uh, you have to embrace the due process in. Uh, getting char. Okay. So, kung lang to, pang, pang pakatawa lang to siya. Pero tinood to, ha? Okay. So, next slide. Now, let us now have the summary of the Philippine criminal justice system. So, if you would be wondering, and if in, um, I know most of you already did your research on um, what is the different pillars of the, the, the criminal justice system. Now, the 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 pillars of the criminal just uh, justice is um, or the question may be asked uh, why uh, we need to have this uh, comparative of the criminal justice system of the other states no so. So our criminal justice system is derived from the American justice context, which initially comprised of uh, these three uh, components. And um, the, the, the three components are the following, the police or the law enforcement pillar, the courts pillar, and the corrections pillar. So. You might be wondering uh, uh, in your research why is it there are three only in the American criminal justice um, and why we have five. So uh, the police in the, the Amer American criminal justice, the police or law enforcement uh, will initiate this uh, criminal justice process by conducting criminal apprehension or arrest. Now court, uh, they were going to conduct the judicial proceedings for the determination of guilt or innocence of this person arrested. And upon conviction, the uh, convict, convict is remanded to correctional institution for rehabilitation. Now, in this jurisdiction, they have five components, which most commonly known as five pillars of the Philippine criminal justice system. So we have five um, police law enforce police or law enforcement pillar, prosecution, courts, uh, corrections, and community. So in comparison, we can easily notice that our system is really composed of five against three from the American system. Our, our system adds another two components, the prosecution and uh, the community. So 
different nation also adopted a different system of justice like again in the u.s uh we, they have three pillars of this justice system and adopted a a co a jury system in japan uh, instead of the jury system uh cases are heard by three judges while in france uh, jurors and judges collaborate to determine the guilt of the defendant and both judges and juror vote on a con uh, on a verdict so the study of uh, such criminal justice system worldwide offers really a great opportunity for us to consider the adaptation of the different policies rules and uh, procedures which can be applicable in our local setting in addition many of our countrymen in the country in other countries uh, work as overseas contract workers so the possibility are really high that they may encounter the uh, criminal justice system of the country where they are working so for this reason um the study of the criminal justice system of that particular country is really a must for our government to extend its assistance to its own um citizen okay so let us now try to have a brief discussion of the different pillars uh the brief discussion of the different pillars with their functions so we have the uh core of uh, the law enforcement agency or police so the law enforcement or uh, law enforcement agency or police are the one who will conduct arrests search seizure and etc and this is known as they are also known or this kind of pillar is known as the prime mover or frontliner of the criminal justice system so same with the american system our justice system starts from the moment the police or the law enforcer apprehend a person suspected for the commission of crime so for this reason again the police and the law in or the law enforcers or law enforcement pillar is considered as the initiator or prime mover of the system and it is worth to understand that uh, without this alleged the commission of crime and and subsequent apprehension of person who is the suspect for uh, committing the crime the criminal justice system cannot be considered validly commenced okay so the arrest of the suspect may be with a warrant or arrest uh, duly issued uh, duly issued by a judge or by warrantless arrest and this will be tackled in the next lessons to come okay so we'll go beyond ito. we'll just uh take it slow so take note take note that there is no accurate uh, or it is not accurate to consider law enforcement agencies to be exactly the same with police because this is uh this is because uh there are other agencies of the government which are charged with uh enforcing law aside from the philippine national police so um the law enforcement agencies has a lot of of uh from its word agency so uh, it does not only uh it does not only mean the philippine national police like for instance um in the bureau of internal revenue bir the bir in is one of the, the law enforcement agencies 
but their task or they enforces the tax laws. So, hence, the BIR may also be considered as the law enforcement agency. The same with the other agency that you know, uh, PIDEA, you, um, uh, uh, BMP, BD, uh, BFP, um, uh, Bureau of Corrections, and many more. Okay, so um, these are what we call law enforcement agencies. Next pillar is the um, prosecution. The prosecution um, is conducted by a certain prosecutor. So the, um, this conducts the preliminary investigation to determine the existence of probable cause. And it may also conduct inquest proceeding to determine the validity of a person who allegedly committed a crime. So if it finds out that there is probable cause in the pre uh, preliminary investigation or if the arrest is valid in an inquest proceeding, it must execute and information to be filed in court. So take note that prosecutor is formerly known as fiscal. So we will not these persons or fiscal or the prosecutor will going to conduct preliminary investigation for the determination of the probable cause that may uh, warrant trial before a judicial court so um, however if the person arrested was apprehended without a warrant under section 5 of rule 113 of the revised rules of court an inquest proceeding must be observed and this will be tackled on the next lessons because in the next lessons we will have we will focus on the diff the five of uh, the different pillar each of the the, the different pillars uh, we will begin with the law enforcement pillar anything that would fall in the law enforcement pillar so whenever the investigating prosecution finds probable cause to warrant trial he will prepare information to be filed with the court having jurisdiction over the case so the prosecutor now will act as the lawyer of the government against the accused. And that is now the time that in the Solomon you will see the people of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz, something like that. So uh, that is, uh, it was uh, being investigated by, uh, there was already a probable cause to uh, warrant a trial. Next is um, the court pillar. The court pillar conducts the trial. The court pillar conducts trial to determine whether the accused is guilty or innocent of the charge. So the court having the jurisdiction of the case will schedule an arraignment for the accused to enter his plea. However, the accused may file motion to quash complaint or information under 117, Section 1 of the Revised Rules of Court. At any time before entering, entering his plea or any grounds under Section 3 of the same rule. So after the pre-trial, the court issues an order reciting what has been taken and thereafter the trial on the merits will proceed on matters not disposed of during the pre-trial so upon trial on the merits adjudication by the court uh, that the accused is guilty or not guilty of the offense 
charge and the imposition of the proper penalty and civil liability if any. It must be written in the official language, personally and directly prepared by the judge and signed by him, and shall also contain clearly the distinctly and distinctly a statement of the facts the and the law upon which the judgment is based. So if the accused is convicted by the trial court and if the he may or may not file an appeal to the next higher court exercising appellate jurisdiction. So one so once uh, the accused the um once there is a uh, the court finds guilty of the accused, then he will go to the next pillar, which is the correction pillar. So in the correction pillar, correction will now come into place after judgment of conviction. So correction or rehabilitation is divided into two approaches. One is the institutional correction and the other one is the non-institutional correction. When the accused is sentenced to serve not more than six years of imprisonment, he may file an application for probation. The court will determine whether he or she is qualified under provisions of the presidential decree 968. And if the application is approved, the convict will be placed under the supervision of the probation officer. The president of the Philippines may also intervene in the exercise of his power of executive clemency by granting either absolute or, or conditional pardon to the convict. So that is the institutional correction. Another community-based correction program may be uh, availed by the convict May, may be avail, availed by the convict that is known as parole. However, under this program, the convict needs to serve at least a minimum of his indeterminate sentence in prison before he may be qualified under his program. So if the convict does uh, or if the convict does not qualify for non-constitutional, non uh, sorry, uh, not, that is non-constitutional correction, um, he will serve his sentence in correctional institution. So there are two bureaus handling it. We have the Bureau Corps, which is the Bureau of Correction, and the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, or the BJMP. So those who convicted of not more than three years of imprisonment will be placed in jail under the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. And those sentence exceed three years will be rehabilitated in correctional institution under BUCOR. So after the service of sentence, either under institutional or non-institutional corrections, it is presumed that the convict is already reformed and fit to be released to the community as law-abiding citizen. So it's it's like a cycle you go uh, you go back to community where you have started as a normal or a free man when you have committed a certain crime uh, certain crime you go to correct uh, law enforcement pillar and when there is uh, 
um, you will be arrested, then you will be prosecuted under the prosecution. If they find a probable cause, you will go to court. And when the court um, already finds guilty of the offense you have committed, you will be put into bars or in correction pillar wherein you will going to be reformed and reha rehab you, you will going to be reformed and rehabilitate then after that once you have already fully um fully uh, served your sentence you will going to, to go back in the community you will be called now the ex convict which is uh at, as now convicts are no, no longer known to be convicts if they will be in prison or prisoners they are they are person deprived of liberty so uh, there is no more word for prisoners or uh uh, uh what you call this one convict but um today they are being called as person deprived of liberty and take note class that correction was considered to be the weakest pillar of the criminal justice system because because according to he to the to, to to some of the books it was being called as the weakest pillar of the criminal justice system because um their main function was to rehabilitate to reform such offender to become a new individual but the thing and uh also uh, in order for that person not to commit this the same uh, the same mistake or the same crime again so that when he goes to the community he, he or she will be a better person but the thing is the the reforms and rehabilitations of these offenders is um not being fully fully um you know fully uh, what you call as one uh that not fully fully uh how do you call this one fully served by this um correction so that is why it was known to be the weakest pillar of the crime because they could not reform and when they goes back to the community uh, since they were not being reformed and rehabilitated well then they will go they will now they will still do such crime and go back goes back but there are also books that would say that it's not really the correction that is the weakest pillar it's the other pillar so uh, it, uh, we will going to tackle that one once we are done with the different pillar and we will assess of what who for you for you what is really the weakest pillar of the criminal justice system okay but in the book that we have and in the the some of and, and the many readings that I, I had, the, the weakest pillar of the criminal justice system was correction. Okay, now after correction, once you have served your sentence again, you will go back to the community. And this community will mold person from birth and integrates offender. So if you, uh, if, uh, so as I've said a while ago, if we would be, if, um, if we'd say that um, the community, the uh, correction is the, the weakest pillar, what about the community? What about the law enforcement? What about the prosecution? What about the court? Right? So there is something between the, the five pillars. So this uh, pillar, the, the community, is very indispensable in the system. In the sense that the absence of these citizens' assistance in the criminal justice system will not be able to handle effectively the complicated task of preventing and controlling crime. So there is a need for more balanced allocation of peacekeeping duties between the criminal justice system and the prevention responsibilities. So thus, the the success of the criminal justice system, specifically the community pillar, will be based on the rule performance of the following. Of course, it should be in the. It would always starts in the family, near home, the barangay, the schools, the government, the private sectors or the non-government organization, the church, and of course the 
mass media. Okay? So those are the pillars of the criminal justice system that is briefly, uh, that uh, is being briefly, uh, I have stated already briefly the, their functions. So uh, together with their uh, functions. So um, I think um, you are being koana with the things that I have said. Uh, do you have questions? You may comment down your questions now. And I will also be, uh, I will be uh, putting the link on where you will going to have your attendance. So I have posted a link on where you can have the um, attendance. So next meeting, we will discuss the law enforcement pillar of the criminal justice system, okay? So we will stop there because this is just an introduction, although um, medyo bulky siya kayo nga introduction, but I hope that I have uh, given you the, the, in, the enough information about our subject, about the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay, so um, if you have question, please comment down, and then um, you may use the the. Wait. I'd like to shout out to my students before so in the other university hello everyone good i think it's already noon good good afternoon so lomarda good afternoon as well as my students in by so good morning everyone Now, uh, I, I do not know if you have, do you have question, clarifications? Okay, so uh, I will just be giving you a video or on the games nga ahong giingon ganiha. I will be giving you a uh, load, free load for the sake nga koan. So the, the attendance will serve as your uh, registration of the raffle. So I will just be... Uh, sending you or uh, message you in our group chat for um, the other uh, announcements and the uh, of course the announcement of winners who will get the winners who will get the the free load so
Okay? Tila po. Um, Juan. Secret. Para vivo. Okay, so if you have no more questions, and if you have questions, you can also uh, put your question in our uh, group chat. I will be... Yes, you can rewatch this video. I will be putting this uh, video in the YouTube. So you can access it anytime if you would like to clarify uh, the things that I have discussed, you you comment in or you you message me via the group chat that we have. Okay, so um, if do you have any other questions, concerns relating to the topic this morning? This yeah this this uh, this morning. Okay, I hope. You have answered already. There are still 33 people who are here in um, the attendance. There are only 33 students. 34. Okay, I will just cut off the uh, the um, chances of cut off na koning names ani in in thirty seconds. Uh, those who have registered or at the attendance na naadili, I will be posting this uh, wheel of names para you will know who are the winners for who. Of course, isa ray winner sa load, ha? Load winner. Okay, in 30 seconds. chance for 30 There are 44 students who are here. I mean, uh, 44 students submitted their attendance.
So it's done already. I will share now. Nagulo ko, nagulan na. So one winner of 100 load and uh, another winner of 50, pe two winners of 50 load. So let's start the, the first one with what, 50. First two persons. Wins 50 pesos load. 50 lang kay wala tay wala tay swildo. Wala lang na amis lang ko sa uh, fourth menu so let's start the ball rolling. I don't know if nakita niyo yung name ha. So there are 55 entries. First uh two First two will win 50 pesos load and uh, the third name or the third winner wins 100 pesos load. Let's start. Oh my God. Ooh. Tandok Jumbelo. Congratulations, you win. 50 pesos load. Nagaan ka na hog load doy. Ay dahan kong sponsor. Char. Mitaw, 50 pesos load. Saraman ko. Na si Tandok Romel palagi. Di judi maayo. Kada adlaw na to ni Himuon. Kay mahuwa. Judi kwa kwa. Ma... Mabrang crap yung kuan ni. <laughs> Naa ba si kuan? Comment na ko no be, Jomel Tandok. Naa ba si Jomel Tandok? Gakilat na mo. Sorry for that. Sige, sige. Ito na yung paspason. Next. Next winner of 50 pesos load. Sarmento May. Congratulations, you win 50 pesos load. And last, who will win 100 pesos load? Message me after this. I'll send you the load before before 5 p.m. Uh, before, yeah, 5 p.m. Okay, may itas akong load. Eee, drilling! Ah! Yay! Finishers! Congratulations, Finishers! You win 100 pesos load. Naba si Pinicious? Comment your name, Pinicious. Okay. So that ends our um, virtual... That ends our virtual class this uh, morning. Thank you very much for for tuning in. So, amping mo perme. And I hope to see you guys all in the next days to come. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. I'm Pink Fermi. God bless. Bye-bye. So those who were, katong mga nakadaog, kindly message me. Dilita pwede mag-everyday discussion kay mahurot inyong data. 
at the same time, mura taong kwarta o sige o pa, duwa din niyo para ma na may interest to go with our koan. So, uh, I will schedule another set of virtual discussion on the next days to come. Stay tuned. Bye-bye, everyone. I'm Pink Fermi. Okay, I will now, I will now, thank you very much. You can um, re replay this one if you would, if you like to replay it. Okay, bye-bye everyone. Stay safe. Bye-bye.